Well, hello. Welcome to Drawing with Fire. I'm Valerie, your neighborhood biography artist, and I'm joined with Hubby. Okay. And for our babies. Woof. Woof. <laughs> and today we are working on the nose and the cheeks. Now, there's something I really want to focus on in regards to the nose. I'm seeing a lot of those newer to burning, so it's great to see you guys burning. But when it comes to children, there tends to be a... Because people are newer to burning and don't feel comfortable not doing the outlines, so they outline the nose and then they go really dark with the nostrils, but then they kind of miss the shading around the nose, making it look like the kids have pig noses. Yeah. So we're going to try very hard to, to narrow this down and just focus on not creating pig noses. Hey, baby. Alrighty, so I Roxy. am going to get started. Roxy. You know, I'm going to get started with the 18, Optima 18 small sphere shader. And we're going to go with, with Jessica's nose first. Hey, Burl, Kathy, Andrea, and more people will come in as we go. I'm going to angle the camera so you can see how the pen, because it's so small, micro movements of me moving my tip, it can be hard to see what I'm doing. So hopefully this will help. Alrighty. So three isn't going to be too awfully dark. I'm actually going to bump down to two and a half. And the first thing we're going to do is get untangled. Because Kathy, Kathy Whitney's here. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Kathy. Been, I'm like all tangled up. <laughs> Ah, when you got so much going on. Alrighty, so two and a half. And what we're going to start with is we're going to use just the tip of the 18 small. And looking at the reference photo, the nostrils aren't black. So there's light hitting under the nose, which creates a reflection up into the nose. So we don't want, in either case, the nostrils to be black. Now there are some times when the deep part of the nostril is really dark, but in this case, and in general with most kids, it's not dark. Now I'm sure we can find some photos that say otherwise, but for now. So I'm going to start right at that, with just the tip, right at where the line is, because where the line is is going to be the darkest. And that's it. It does not have to be dark in any way. And I'm actually going to turn down to two because I am using the tip. The tip of any pen um, Excuse me. tends to burn hotter. So I've got to take that into consideration. And now we're going to put the side in real quick. Now, remember, it's not a line. If we look at the fingers here, we see a shadow in between the two fingers. It's not a line, it's shading, and so we need to make sure we put soft shading in to this. Oh, I was looking over at Ezra's nose, but I'm not doing Ezra's nose right now. So I'm going to right up against, I'm going to very quickly move, and yes, I am going light, because in this case, Jessica's nose is lighter. Hi. Of course, when it comes to oh. ethnic, the color of skin is going to change slightly. But even if we were doing somebody with dark skin, it still wouldn't be harsh. And that's what we got to take into consideration. Now, the first thing we're going to put in is the bulb of the nose. In this reference photo, we see shading along the edge of the bulb. I'm going to quickly grab the reference. So right here Spencer's. is the ball of the nose. Spence is here. Hey, Spence. And some is mo some bulb of the nose is more prominent than others, but we have a shadow right here, and it's really important we get this shadow to start shaping the nose. And we even have a little bit on this side of the nostril as well. So we got to take that into consideration and put that in there. Shh. We're not playing right now. Ugh, they're hyper. All right. Do I need to zoom in more? I mean, uh-uh. Layla. So I'm going to zoom in more. There we go. Hopefully, 
I know it's blurry on the eye. I didn't get to detail the eyes last week. I was working on the Super Toasties gift. <laughs> so I didn't get to work on this. So right here, I'm going to actually touch down in the nostril a little bit. Pull some of the heat for my tip so I don't have dark. And then I'm going to drag quickly around. And you just notice I've got a shadow here. Let's stay focused. Stay focused. So we put that side of the bulb in. And then we're going to come over here. And put that side. And I know it's so soft. But when it comes to the nose, we don't want any harsh lines. Now Ezra's nose is cut in half with the shadow. But even then, we're not going to have harsh lines with that shadow. So make sure bring out her nostril a little bit and of course when I um, sand, when I go to erase the graphite it'll be even easier to see so on this well it's technically the right side of her nose but I'm gonna point to my left because that's how the photo is facing you we've got right here on the nostril we got some shading that's giving us the shape so we got to get <clears throat> that in, excuse me. So let's shade that in. And I don't see that I have any more lines. So what I'm going to do is quickly erase. Just so we can see a little bit better what's going on. And the more I erase as I go, the easier it's going to be to get the graphite off. The graphite that I'm using would be this and it's the only kind that I use gray um, this is the only brand so that's what I'm using and I tried not to push very hard so that it wasn't overly dark so now we can start shaping this a little bit more again I'm on two with the 18 small spear shader uh, by Optima so all we want to do is make sure we put the shapes in. The shapes are the most important part. So looking at it, we got our shadow that crosses down. But by putting this in with just the tip, it shows I need to go darker right here. And I can build that up. We do have some light coming down. There's a light right here under the nose. So I'm going to put that in real quick. And now I can go back and darken this just a little bit. And then under her nose, so the bottom of the nose, we can't see too awfully much. I'm going to grab the sepia photo. See, it's all light right here. Again, the light's hitting here. And bumping up and actually it could also be going in the opposite direction so we got to keep that in mind don't want to confuse anybody including myself so down here I can see my shading can go a little darker but then I got to darken this even more so that it's not overly done and I'm going to I'm flat and I'm dragging down so I can get some shading on the bridge of the nose because the bridge is in the shadow but now I can come across I'm actually going to bump down to one and a half because I am using the tip I need this to be really really light I'm going to put this curve in and I've got to bring this nostril down it's a little blurry it's a little blurry? Mm -hmm. huh I have the autofocus off but let's see Maybe it turned back on somehow. Maybe it's because I'm so close. So what I can do is I can zoom in and then pull the camera out. Maybe it won't be as blurry. Maybe. In theory, it won't be as blurry. So we'll back it out a little bit. Is that... I can't tell you. I need to up this for a minute. Hopefully that's a little bit better. So that's better? Yeah, I think, I think so. Alright. If that's better, please let me know in the chat. 
All right, so I'm going to go back to this nostril because it is a larger nostril that we see. Both nostrils are the same size, but what we're visually seeing, we have a little bit more detail on this nostril. Just the tip. And what we're seeing is ovals, so I need to oval it out a little bit. Again, I'm not... Kathy says, yep, better. Oh, good. And I agree. So just putting in these shadows. And then we've got the shadow from under the frame. And this is a darker shadow. So I'll just fill that in, block that a little bit. I can come back to it later. Again, we see this needs to go darker because as I darken other areas, and see this looks really thick, so I'm gonna pull it into this actual cheek, and then it won't look so thick. Because all of this is shading. And I'll go back and erase again, but we still need to get the bulb, which is even lighter, underneath. And then we need to get this nostril in. But we got to leave a slight area on the outside of the nostril because we do have a highlight there. So it's all these little strokes that bring the nose together. This goes down, so we'll bring this down. Just so I can see where it's at. And then we all got. You really have to plan out the. You really have to be able to see the structure for what it is and then be able to plan your attack. Yes. You know? So I, I think, like you said, a lot of people, they have that kind of outline look, and it's because you know, your brain's going to go on autopilot because it wants to just draw out the lines. And, but if you do that, it, it's going to mess it up. So. so as we keep putting the shadow in, the shadows in, we'll start building up the nose. We'll start seeing it take shape. But it's a matter of making sure we get the shading in the right spot so that it doesn't look dirty. Don't want it to look dirty. But I do need look at this cheek muscle in right here. So all of this is showing darker than the highlight that's hitting her cheek. So just using the tip and going in oval strokes with low heat, I can start shaping this. And because I don't have the highlight, or I'm sorry, I don't have the outline, it starts looking like a real nose. Now I know right now, because we're so zoomed in and the rest of the area isn't put on, <coughs> excuse me, yeah, it's going to look a little harsh, like you got a dirty nose. Put that. I'm putting that line in for the glasses just so I know where that is. And see, this is why it helps to have all the areas blocked in as you move. But I'm just going to have to be okay with that. Bring these together. Now this cheek, we definitely need those smile lines because, well, that's Part of your face and it gives you character. So we need to make sure that we bring it up to the nose. And again, if you notice, I'm not putting any harsh lines. This is all shading up against everything. So now we can go back in. Let's see, I'm going to try a different eraser. 
because I can get in the corner. Every time you erase is gonna lighten up because the graphite you're burn you're burning over the graphite so it kind of dirties up your burn but if you go with more of a lighter um, mark you'll still pull the graphite out from underneath the burning and so you can see a little burning comes off but that's totally normal that's the that's the carbon that's sitting on top of the burn. And wipe. See now that I can see that's in, I can actually go a little darker. So I didn't test my tip. Because I can go a little darker and darken up just a little bit the nostril. Let's see here, this side, against the line, is a little darker. So just the tip touching down. So then I'll move into another area and go flat just to smooth out areas. So I need to see that I, that needs to go darker. Now we're back to the bulb. Our shiniest part is just above. This nostril. We still have to. Have a little lighter area. I need a little more defined line, shading line right here. So I'm going Sheila's here. Hey, Sheila. <coughs> hmm. See, that line's actually a little thicker than I want. So what I'm going to do... Camera. I am going to take one of these sanding sticks, and I always wrap around the stick some 400 grit sandpaper because that's what I sanded to. And I intentionally wrap it around just so it's easier to hold. Wait, so you're wrapping sandpaper around sandpaper? Yeah, because the, this isn't as fine oh, okay. as what I'm using here. I was about to accuse you of being redundant. It is, but it's because I need a finer grit. Okay. Now, going... Makes sense. <laughs> going with the grain. You gotta go with the grain because there's a good possibility that when you finish your piece, if you've gone against the grain, when you finish your piece, that when you apply the varnish, you will see scratches if you've gone across the grain versus with the grain. Yep. So we need to true. keep that Very true. in mind. So this is all... Just small. What it is, is I think maybe. See, it's already coming into focus. Like, you're already seeing the structure of the nose. Mm -hmm. It I, doesn't take I, a lot. You know, I, I, I was looking at the title. Is it is it Misery? Is, is it making a realistic nose a misery? Can be. Can be. You know, mm -hmm. I, I would say, especially when I was, before I kind of learned how to, to like see stuff to render it I would say that in my drawings there would be big erase marks around the nose because I was not able to get the nose right because I was so busy just trying to outline it and it just didn't look you do that and you end up looking you know you remember those funny glasses with the nose and the mustache like yeah the Groucho marks yeah, for people who are, who are old enough to know that, mm. like probably most of our audience. But anyway, including so, us. So yes, including us. So if you do that, your your portrait is going to look like uh, Val said. It's going to either look like a pig, or it's going to look like a, the fake nose and glasses. 
because it's so defined that stands out from the rest of your face that you're doing. So it, it is a delicate balancing act and it can be quite miserable doing it over and over again. So Again, I'm not saying anything harsh about anybody's yeah. burning, especially those uh, new to burning, doing a portrait. Yeah. In regards to the pig nose comment. Yeah. That is totally not meant to be a personal attack of any kind. No. It's, it's to give you a visualization and how we can do it better. Alrighty. But I think, honestly, just being honest, which I am, of course, mm -hmm. if you have been doing portraits for any period of time, you have done that. You've done that in the beginning. You've drawn a nose that looked like that. And you were unhappy with it. Yep. So. So I have a grain line going through this right now. That's one of the things throwing me off. But I'm going to scratch out the highlight part a little bit. You're a good girl. Aww. And remember when I go to varnish, this is just going to, to be yes. wood color. But look at that. We got a nose without any out outlines. Yep. Now we're going to move down to his nose because his nose is squinching and we have it cut in half. We have different areas that have bright highlight. Too many problems. Can't be done. <laughs> Abort. Nah, we got this. We got this. What I do need to make sure is my drawing's correct. Wait. I feel like I can't see his nostril right here as well. And I have my um, my patterns taped to the board next to me. You don't have to do that. It just makes things easier. Spence says looks awesome, and Kathy says looking so great. Thank y'all. Uh, we just got started. She and we. I am <laughs> watching her get started. Um, but very kind. Let's see here. I feel... Because I put dots. I, I always, I've always done this. I use dots for where... Uh, shading or highlight go but I did it like a little too soft because you know I didn't want anything on the face that was harder to remove so what I'm doing so right here we have a bit of an indent it helps if I'm actually on camera there we go so I'm going to put that in. I apologize. I was distracted. Did you know that our three dogs are are good? <laughs> they just told me that. Uh, They're very good. So I want to... So we have a wrinkle right here. And that's from the squinting. Layla. She, she can't stop. So I'm going to put that in real quick. And then it curves up into the... I have dots here, but even I can't see them. So I'm going to very quickly... But you know they're there. I know they're there, because I did it, but I can't see them. They are phantom dots. They are phantom dots right now. So very quickly. But he looks so devious there. But that's what I love. Yeah, but you got to you gotta finish absolutely. him up, because right now he's, he's exuding gremlin energy. And he's a sweetheart. He really is. He's a smart little bugger. Mm. Except, but except when he's a gremlin. Yes, except when he's a gremlin. All right. <laughs> the chicken incident. I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> I just think it's funny. Well, I don't know. You can talk about it. I, I, I believe that overall, people in chat have children, grandchildren, great grandchildren. So they would understand this. So we were so. While they were stayed, because they stayed with us for like a week. Yep. And um, so they had to get used to, you know, Grandma and Pop Pop's rules. And, you know, one of the rules was uh, Grandma made delicious cinnamon rolls, but you have to eat dinner to eat cinnamon rolls. Because, you know, how can you eat your pudding if you don't eat your meat? Exactly. Right? So, um, anyway. So, you know how kids are, they kind of play along, and they're like, yeah, 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 you know, I, I'm sure I can, I'm sure I can, I can work around this somehow, 
and he was trying really hard not to eat his chicken, which he liked, but he's just, just being obstinate. He didn't want to eat his chicken. And I told him that he needed to eat his chicken, and he looked at me, and he got this really defiant look on, and then he just put his hand into a knife edge, and he just smacked his chicken across the room, or, you know, his plate full of chicken. And he was like, no, I'm not eating your chicken. And um, anyway, uh, yeah, he, he has his moments, but he, he had He's to... He's three. He had to learn... He had to learn. ...that there are boundaries, and there are things that you cannot do, and... And you cannot, you cannot smack your chicken across the room and expect a cinnamon roll. Yeah. So, um, but yes, the three years old, you know, every kid has that. They're, they are the center of their universe and, and everything that they see in their domain belongs to them. So it's, it's hard, it's hard confronting that, that belief system from a three year old. And he did not get cinnamon rolls. He did not. He got him the next day when he ate his dinner. When he, when he ate his dinner. Yep. Yep. And he loved it. <laughs> he loved it. He loved it. So I'm turning the board. Oh, is it showing up? Oh, so big. What's the matter? Oh, no. If you look real quick at the description, above the description, I have a new cup. <laughs> the description above the description? Yeah. There, if you look at the, at the description of the video, of the live... I have a new cup. Oops, look at the right people. Look at the right. Yeah. And it says it's easier to turn your board than stand on your head. So if you're in, you know, nobody has to, but if you're interested and want a new, want a new cup, is right there for you. All right. So our darkest. The part of it's printed upside down. So yes. if somebody asked you. Oh, that's right. If somebody asked you what that says. Don't try and turn your cup over to show them because then you'll spill your drink. Yep. All right. Oh, so let's see. this part of the nostril All right. it curves over, and we get a highlight right here because he's squinting. So it's right here. We need to make sure and not burn over that area. In fact, I will probably actually put, in fact, I can do that real quick, just as a visual. Oh, look at you. Right here. It's right here. I can always erase it later, which I'm going to because I got to get rid of the line. So right here. Right here we have the highlight, like strong highlight on the nose, and then right here. So that's just a visual, so I know not to burn right there. And I will. Yes, I see you. Oh, I do. I see you. I will put some white highlight in that when I'm done. Because I feel like. It makes the nose look more realistic. Sorry. Yes. Brain was trying to do two things at once. All right. So right here we have our darkest shadow. Okay. It goes into his eye. Yes. And comes down. So because we're trying to get that squinty look, we have to have this shadow or it won't work. And as soon as I erase the graphite, hopefully we'll be able to see better of what this looks like. So we got to make sure we get the turn of the angle right. Let's see here. So this is a lighter burning. Kathy says... She really wants to do wood burning of her grandmother. She has two old pics. One is black and white of her in a flapper dress. Ooh, cool. that would be awesome. And one is just a face uh, that has faded kind of brown. So it sounds like a sepia that's Yeah, it's already, it was probably colorized, or it was taken in color, but then faded. Yeah. So. Absolutely. 
Uh, Omar Dario Orduz Ochoa says hola. Hola. Como esta? Alrighty. So, see, and I just turned around and erased what I put in, which is fine. It's just so I don't get lost. This is the, right up against that line is the darkest part of the nostril. And then we're going to go flat and oval and darken this shadow up. And this way the shadow on the eye makes even more sense. We've got to have this shadow on the nose to make it work. Let's see here. I'm going to turn this so I can get the angle right. Back down. And then we have a dark shadow. Is this our first burning of the, or our first broadcast of the new year, or was that second. the second one? Does anybody do New Year's resolutions? Does anybody? Not me. <laughs> does anybody have plans for the new year, like things that they want to do? You don't necessarily have to have a resolution. You might just have to, you might have some goals, though, you know, goals and aspirations and dreams. Well, I always have those. Love to hear about those. Chat. Let's see here. This is. We do have shading. We gotta leave this area right here in the middle. So we have flesh tone. Remember, looking at our sepia, we can see. Omar said, Gracias. Let's see here. Let's drag this out. It's a very soft so again it's easier to build up so start off lighter then you can darken it we got this line right here this is that wrinkle that gives us a squinty eye Carol says, she says it's escaping to Mexico for three weeks at some point this winter. Oh. Uh, she didn't say when. She normally goes in February. But uh, maybe. Let's see here. I see some double graphite line or something. Omar says, Gita Grafo, which I'm assuming that means pyrography in Espanol. Yes. Sorry, uh, my uh, Espanol is. Uh, not too bueno, <laughs> but I will try. No bueno. But I will try. No bueno. I will do my best. No bueno. All right. So we really got to cut this cheek line in. So right on top of the graphite. Again, I'm still at one and a half with the 18 small. But again, because I'm using the tip. On basswood, it burns a little darker. Girl says probably at the end of March this year. March. They're going to Mexico. Uh, Venus Maria says I'm always confused as to whether to do the outline or shadow in a project. Is there any rule to that? Interesting question. So, okay, so I'm guessing when you say outline is when you see me like doing right here up a close to it is that what, what we're thinking outline or are you thinking outline as in draw you know drawing a line harsh line around all of the stuff you already have on the board the graphite is that or are we talking just the right up against Okay, so the outline or the shadow? She says yes, the outline. So I, I would assume that means that um, Layla and Morgan. Okay, let me rephrase it because when I hear outline, I'm thinking, dra you know, 
drawing all, burning all these lines in. When I'm right up against the graphite doing a soft line, I don't see that as an outline. So I, so I, I just need her clarification of what he's thinking so that I can adjust and get... And, and I want to make a clarification for good you. Good info. Because right now you are burning onto, you know, the piece, which has, you know, outlines on it, but the, they're guidelines. They're just guidelines. They're, they're not going to appear me. in the final work. No. They're, they are, um, they're just there to guide Valerie, and they are not part of the final composition. When we talk about outlines, I'm just quoting Valerie at this point. Yeah. Um, you know, we're not really doing outlines, but if you see things that look like outlines, if you look closely, you're going to see that they're just transition points from lighter areas to darker areas that yes. create contrast. And that is how you should think about shadows, is you should think of them as, as areas of contrast. And you should be careful not to draw outlines because well, it's not going to produce realistic work. Also, even if you're writing lightly or burning lightly, it's going to create a line on the wood that you, you're going to have a very difficult time working around or erasing. That line is going to be there. So, um, I'm just waiting for her clear. She says, oh, yes. I, okay, so the rule in regards to outline versus not outline. If you're going for realism, no outlines. No outlines anywhere. If you don't feel confident in your abilities yet, and you're afraid you're gonna lose the graphite, and so you feel you need those outlines, turn your heat way down low, just enough for you to barely see it, and get your outline in, <clears throat> based on what you're comfortable with because then you can darken everything up but just to draw an outline around everything when it comes to realism no outlines now if you're doing a stylized piece a comic or any other way you want to you know do it outside of realism then go for it have fun enjoy but when it comes to realism no outlines and Hopefully that helps. That's why I needed some clarification before. I, because if you want to do outlines for realism, then go very, very light. Because then you can adjust and make everything work the way you want to and, and get the contrast. But if you go with a light medium to dark line on a realistic project, it's not going to look realistic. So it depends on what your goal is. If you're going for realism, no outlines. If you're just doing, you know, a different kind of art, a different technique, and you want to do outlines, go for it. Have fun. Have fun. She says excellent. Many thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Kathy, I just want to make sure I answered you right. Kathy Whitney says such great information, Val. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Um, All righty. You know, and I, I would say, too, for those of you who are watching for the first time, those of you who have been here, you know that um, Val works very, uh, she works at very, very low temperatures and then works to darker uh. temperatures to get the darker values. And the temptation will be to burn very dark and to get it done quickly. But uh, in, unless you are yeah. extremely confident in what you're doing, that is, I would say, honestly, my opinion is, is that it'd be ill-advised because you're laying down those dark lines, and if you do something wrong that's off, you might have to scrap your entire piece because it, it may be something that you cannot yeah, fix. Yeah, you may be doing a lot of outlining. So, or, I'm sorry, sanding. Sanding. So better to work uh, from light to dark and be patient and methodical, and that way you're able to develop your piece the way that, that you want it and the direction that you need it to be uh, rendered in as opposed to just trying to get it done in a hurry. So, be patient. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the cheek line, the smile line. I'm just using the tip and doing oval strokes 
I would say oval stroke is the stroke I use the most because it's easier to blend. And I'm still on one and a half. I need to make a video on just get comfortable with your pen. Because then... Cute out, haven't you? I feel like you have. Oh, there's another video I want to do. I guess. Okay. I haven't done it. Alright, so actually this line is in his mouth. So I'll come back to that later. So now we got squeaky nose and we're putting in this cheek so this wrinkle under the eye is an important wrinkle because when we squint we get that wrinkle so if i don't put that wrinkle in it's not gonna look like he's squinting it's just gonna look like he's got a weird nose hey shirley yes uh shirley <laughs> for this month i am yeah, that's, yes for this month this is public this is for everybody if you like what Valerie does, um, you can certainly join. Uh, Shirley was a member. Um, and well, I know Shirley was. I'm just speaking in general for anybody else who's watching this video. Um, you can certainly join up uh, with the channel, and then you'll have access to the members-only videos. But this month, you're doing this portrait, and you're making it freely available for everybody. So that's very kind. Well, that's because every January we do, at least in the. Drawing the Fire <coughs> Facebook group, we do a portrait. And this year, I decided children. Yep. Alrighty, so I'm going to actually erase that wrinkle line, the graphite. We'll get in here. So I'm going to ask this question. I already know the answer, but I'm asking it for the people who might want to know. Okay. So you put in your, your graphite guidelines, mm -hmm. um, and so you, you're burning over them. Is there any Or near them. Or near them. Is there any, ever any issue with them coming up? Like, is for erasing them? They don't get trapped in the burn? No, because I'm burning. I, I don't try to do harsh lines. I know I put more pressure here, um, but that's our hair, so I can blend it out. But where there's light areas, I try to go with the least amount of pressure on the transfer so that I don't have to worry about getting rid of it. Okay. But I will also be wiping down with denatured alcohol, which so, also removes the graphite. Not carbon, graphite. Okay, so essentially, when you're burning, you have these guidelines, but at the end of the piece, there will be no graphite left on the piece. No. Okay. No. No, this is just so I get my proportions right. Yeah, so I get my proportions right. I could do this freehanded, and I'd be spending a lot more time. It would take me three times as long and I don't do freehand on the board because you keep erasing and erasing you leave a lot of graphite on the board yeah. so all right so we have a highlight I'm gonna go ahead and mark it Ayla stop she likes to lick things she likes to look, lick the metal chair like it feels good on her tongue or something all right, that I know that's super bright, but that's just, and it looks like it's in the wrong place. All right, so let's look at the guidelines uh, or the guide. So, based on my reference, it is right here. Okay, there we go. So we got a bright highlight here. I'm just putting it in so I don't burn over the area, and then we have right here. And this is just the general charcoal. Um, I have it. I have it uh, linked on my Amazon page, just down in the description. Everything I use, if I can find it on Amazon, I put it just be on the Amazon list for everybody. Be quiet. Alrighty. So this is the darkest part. It's small strokes with just the tip very small 
And then we have some lighter area. that I actually can take my sandpaper and again because I'm burning so light and for a face you do want to go lighter <coughs> ah sorry about that guys I move my camera there we go all right so there's an area right where the smile line and his nose meets that has a bit of a highlight so I need to make sure I have it. So I'm sanding with the direction of the grain. Let's see here. I need a small, small area. And it goes. I can always in fact I went too high. I can always reburn, so I'm not worried about if I got in the wrong spot. It's right here. I went too far up to the wrinkle. And right here. Not a big deal. I'm going to... Ash Kusanagi says hello. Hi, Ash. So happy to see you live. Happy <laughs> New you. Year. Thank you. Happy New Year. Thank you, Kathy. Yes, please. Thumbs up, like, subscribe, share it, leave some comments. It all helps the channel. It does. It's much appreciated. Alrighty. It's free, so it'd be really cool if you did. So we got that lighter area, and you get the rest of the curve. Wait, wait, you're driving me nuts, child. Can't help it. Bring this down. I don't want to lose that non heating place again. So now I need to burn where it's the darkest. Follow the shape of that. Cheek. Now we gotta bring this down, and then this line is actually the darkest. All right, let's pull it out. Now, because we're doing this in pieces, things aren't going to look all together until everything else is in. But with this blocking in for me i tend to block everything in get all my stuff in <coughs> excuse me get the graphite off the board then really detail some of the areas out and that does make a difference so right now the nose is laid out don't feel like i need to do anything else well, I think it looks really good. It, it has a dimensional quality to it, which is what you, you know, that's what you're trying to achieve anyway. Yeah. Um, I just feel like... You may be wondering who, you know, like, I'm commenting on this. I'm no pyrographer. I'm an artist. That Val's the pyrographer. So I, I, can, I can speak to Val's technique and to, like, general technique, but I certainly could not do this. Sure you could. Well, it would take practice. I have but a different focus. You have a different focus, but because you already are an artist who does portraits, you could do this. Um, yeah, just in time. I've tried it before. It's a very, it is rewarding, but it's definitely different. So, yeah. That line is a pretty harsh line, so that's what I'm trying to get rid of. And I always use an eraser after I sand because it pulls all the eraser uh, guts out. <laughs> Alright, so. Are you talking about those little pieces of eraser that get left behind and yep. stick to the yep. board? Yeah. But the eraser helps with that. Yeah. 
I'm just trying. I know, bro. You've tried to make me a pyrographer. Where did that get me, though? I get, it got the community betting on when I would burn myself. That's what it got. <laughs> it, it did get that, yes. I am most happy. I'm, you know, I'm happy leaving the pyrography to the pros. So, to the to Val and the Toasties, you, you guys do the pyrography. I will provide colorful commentary. Right. So I'm trying to shape her smile line because we have shadow from hair and glasses. I'm actually going to bump up to two just so I can do this a little quicker. Oh, and remember, I changed the direction of the hair right here. So I have to take that into consideration as well. Touch down on my scrap board. Just to pull. But I think right now, what, in order for this to look closer, her glasses are transparent. But do I have to keep them that way? Because I'm the artist, I can make changes and make it more solid if it would make sense. More so with the burning. So that's always the fun of being the artist. You can make all kinds of changes. Spence says if you're, you know you're part of the group if we're betting on you. Yep. <laughs> that is true. So I'm trying to darken just a little bit so I can get the cheek the way I want it. I want to uh, thank everybody who um, sent us Christmas ornaments over the years because those went up on our tree. They did. And they were much appreciated. So we had a few new additions this year. One of them was the pickle. Yeah. Yep, the pickle was there. It was very chaotic, so the kids did not really get a chance to, to hunt for the pickle that was hidden on the tree. But, but we did. All right, so we have... <clears throat> I did up my temperature, so I need to be careful on touching down. We have a smile line and shadow. And see, as I... In fact, I need to lower that. And then I go back down to... Looks like I was higher than two. What was I thinking? Well, if you don't know what I'm thinking, how am I supposed to know what I'm thinking? I just do commentary. I don't do your inner monologue. So I'm trying to detail out a little bit just so we can see. And this is where... I guess... Ash says, Dear Valerie, I never have the opportunity to thank you enough for all you do for biography. Thanks oh, very much. Thank you. I'm not sure my English is correct. It's very correct, Ash. You did a fantastic job. Oh, Little thank you, Ash. Compliment. Thank you. And spelled my name right. Yep. Ooh. Bonus points. Spence says, I think adults can hunt for the pickle, too. Yeah, you know, I think next year, because they're going to be a little bit older, I think we're going to make it a thing. Like which I'm one? sorry I had to stop my brain. Hmm? Why? What's the matter? Repeat the words you just said. I don't, You know what? Get your mind out of the gutter. Anyway... So adults can hunt for the pickle, too. The pickle. Anyway. So next year, the uh, the pickle ornament that is on the tree will be a bigger deal because they'll be a little older and there'll be a reward for whoever gets to find it. So The pickle, Valerie. The pickle. I'm going to, once again... Get your mind out of the gutter. That's not fun. Gutter play is always fun. I'm actually going to darken this curl right here because with the... I will Rick roll you again. Yeah. You Rick rolled me. I did. I'm switching out to the 18 extra small because I can put that at a lower, t a lower heat level and get a darker burn. So I'm putting it at two and a half. Her hair... Her hair is not dark, dark, dark. But I need, let's see, how do I do my pattern? So I'm, I'm just picturing like hair coloring in a box. 
and then there's like one box that says dark, and another box that says dark, dark, and then another box that says dark, dark, dark. <laughs> yeah, it can work that way. It's All right. So I, I, but I do need to darken. And right here is a really big dark. So I'm flat, and I'm just trying. We will do a segment specifically on hair, but I need some of these darks in here to help adjust things. And that's why it's always good to go lighter because then you can do all these adjustments and you don't have to worry about messing anything up. Yep. And it always looks like it's too dark when you first lay it down. By the time you're finished, they'll realize that you need to darken so much more. Yep. But you know what? That's okay. That is totally okay. Alright, so now back to the cheek. How do they... Touch down in an area I've already burned, so it's not as hot. What do you mean by that touch down in an area that you've already burned? I'm less likely to get a blob if I touch down in an area that's already burned based on this heat setting because to darken in general you need a little bit higher heat oh. like if it was going I'm going to bump this down to one and a half it'll still burn so if I burn like really hot and get a black mark if I need to somehow darken that later I really can't it's a it's pretty much where it's going to be. But if I go lighter, I can bump up my heat and darken the area. So right now I'm flat. I'm just trying to blend. And it, again, it looks super dark. And that's because nothing else is in. As I put more things in, it will lighten up. So we have a shadow right here. So I'd say this pen will pick up more of a texture depending on the wood. So I'm going to switch back over to the 18 small. Two. And that way I can just blend out because right here we have more of a highlight. And then because things are round. The highest point gets the light, and as it moves around, the shadow gets darker and darker and darker. So we got to keep that in mind. So in order to make her cheeks feel like the round, lovely as they are, I want to I want to reiterate on these like areas because there's a, a shadow line on you know on her mouth. It's like the smile line that that comes down from her nostril on both sides. And then, of course, there's your glasses in your brain. You'll see that there's distinct areas where the contrast is, changes, you know, immediately. Your brain wants to register those as a line. They're not lines. They're just areas of, of high contrast. And it's important to remember that so that your brain doesn't trick you into making a line. Okay. So because it will. Yep. I'm using just the tip and small circles. Text, this text still hasn't gone out of bed apparently. Do what? Oh. <laughs> hey, that's wrong. What's wrong with that? All right, let me bring this together. So we have our. This is darker. We have a highlight here that goes off into. <coughs> so now, when I want a lighter burn, I'll do bigger strokes, and I will move quicker. That is the biggest secret. If you can control your heat. They yeah, brought that down a little too much, I think. Okay. If you can control your heat set your heat with your pen, I think you'll see a difference. But that also means you've been spending more time with your pen. Yeah. And you feel more comfortable. True. As long as you challenge yourself and you spend that time, you will always improve. 
if you don't challenge yourself and you just keep doing the same subjects or whatnot every time you may see you, you will improve within that subject but then you won't see differences anymore so by doing different things even doing a portrait can help you with a animal because a lot of the concepts are the same so the more you can do of different subjects the quicker you will learn and the quicker you will improve when you um when we say challenge like, like let's say if you're if you're doing portraits if you're used to doing them in a certain way like like a lot of people do portraits like directly on so like looking directly ahead or they do profiles so when you say challenge yourself you know do something from a three-quarter view yeah. or change the perspective or if you don't like doing hands start doing hands the things that you avoid doing are the things that you should be tackling because anytime that you do them even if you're not doing them to you know your satisfaction you're still improving yeah because you're challenging yourself as Valerie said so when you say challenge yourself do things that are uncomfortable to do because that's how you're going to improve as an artist. I mean, I've never, I've never burned a kid. So that's a good thing to be able to say in a lot of different ways. Um, yep. Uh, yeah. Ash says, my husband walked in the room and said, that's our granddaughter. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Yep. <laughs> yep. That means they recognize that he, he goes with me. Yes. All right. just softly and when I want to go lighter I also pull my pen down a little bit so instead of just using the very tip maybe I'm using the top third or the top half and those are all those little micro movements that make all the difference because I don't have this eye in I'll stay back down here but I know right now it may feel off because we don't have everything blocked in. Just letting you know that we we uh, pa we passed an hour. Oh, okay. And some of our folks have had to go. Oh, okay. Uh, nobody that we nobody is from chat yet. But I don't think yeah. so. But but people are starting to have to leave. Alright, there we go. Let's pull this out. I know it could it'd be hard to see, but let's move it this way. Let's well, bring it already down. seeing a big difference from where you're starting. Yeah. He looks like he's squinching his nose. Granted, until I put the other eye in, it, it may be a little less being able to see. I will get that eye in, both their eyes in for next live because the mouth is another area that in this case has darks that I need to put in but teeth or the nose I would say I would say the nose and teeth are the ones I see with uh, uh, teeth are a whole other problem yeah but yes and we're gonna focus specifically on the teeth yeah. for that reason but I'm trying to think what is it the eyes is it the teeth that I <coughs> see the most issues with when somebody's trying to go with the realism so from my perspective what I see uh, is that people get they don't get the placement of the eyes right or something that's something yeah. that's off and it ends up not looking like it like yeah the person but with the teeth people think well teeth are white and so the teeth always end up being yeah. brighter than people think that they should be and it ends up dominating the composition and looking kind of weird so you know it gives them kind of like almost monster teeth or neon a neon look to their teeth and it it's actually the teeth are in shadow and it's a lot more subtle than that you'll go over all that yeah, yeah. i just realized on her mouth that i missed a line so i will fix that for next week what are you burning on ash wants to know this is basswood um basswood. linden if you're out of the u.s is it Lyndon? Is that right, Sheila? Lyndon? Yes, I believe so. Yeah. 
Um, the poplar that I have has green streak, has green grain in it, and I so I don't use those for portraits. Um, but this, yeah, this is basswood. It was a long piece that I had cut down to an eight by ten, which that's linked down in the description. The wood that I'm using right now, and it's quarter inch thick, which makes it a lot easier for framing. <coughs> I tend to use either an eighth of an inch or or an, quarter of an inch. Alrighty. Right now I'm looking and it he feels dirty, but he's not. We gotta put everything else in. And then I can adjust it more. So do we have any questions on nose and cheeks? Always make sure a rounded surface, the highest part gets the light, and as it moves away it gets darker and darker and darker. Um let me find something that will... A good portion of what an artist does is being able to see and decipher the reference uh, material, whether that's a live model or a photo. Yeah. Um, being able to understand how that surface exists in three dimensions is crucial to being able to um, create your portrait. And the other remaining part is the skill with your tools. Yeah, maybe not the best example. What I'm trying to show you is the light's coming from this direction. So this is lighter, but as it curves around, it gets darker and darker until it meets the shadow in the back. So that that's for all things that are round. I was looking for a better example, but I can't see one at this second. So if we don't have any... Oh, now I see some of their black and... And you can see the, the, the point of that where it meets the shadow. You could, your brain is going to want to see that as a line. But yeah. something to remember is that the point of contrast is going to be light on one side and dark on the other side. Whereas a line, it's going to just be uniformly dark. And yeah, that's why it looks like a line. And right. that's why it doesn't look realistic. I'm trying to see if I can change the... That's not a line. That's a shadow. Yep. And then we have light here some light here and then it's darker in the middle because it curves. This is the highest point within the finger that's why he's getting the light same as here and then it goes down in here. Yep. I, I know that can seem I think you ask. <laughs> yes she's definitely a, a work in progress. In pro in, yeah progress that's the word I wanted. <coughs> Alrighty, so next week we shall do mouth and teeth. And we got two sets of teeth in this one. So we got to make those look real. And next week I'll be doing more commentary and petting dogs. Because I'm the hubcap. You're the hubcap. Alrighty, you know what to say with me. So say, let's say it. You're awesome. You can do this. Why? Because you're a pyro artist. Happy burning, guys. Don't forget the new... In, in the, click details and you'll see cups. So the newest cup is... It's easier to turn your wood than stand on your head. Bye! <laughs>